architectural drawings uh, from a 3D model. So that includes all of the elevations, that includes all of the materials, uh, dimensioning, uh, section cuts, um, side plan as well. Uh, so this is going to cover pretty much all of that. So what I have right here is I've modeled a house, a two-story house that has a staircase, it has windows, it has interior walls, partition walls, um, everything, uh, just a small house. And we're going to use this to generate all of our drawings. And uh, in the previous assignment, you should already have created a topography for your building, and you should have already created um, kind of the contours and the site plan as well. So let's start with our model. Um, as per previous assignments, uh, we're going to start to do the make 2D command. So let's copy and paste this house um, a little bit further away. Let's go to our view. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to our desired view. So we're going to set view. And let's say we go to front, for example. We simply select it and we type in make 2D. OK. Let's go to top view. And you can see that the front elevation uh, was turned into a 2D drawing. And you would continue to do this for the rest of the views. For example, I can go to left view, select it, type in make 2D, OK, and uh, it's created again. So continue to do this for all of the views, and you should end up having four elevations. Um, so the four elevations should look like this. And just keep in mind that when you have make 2D, a lot of times the, uh, the lines um, will be translated incorrectly. So if there are any problems, just go to trim and of course, you know, just clean up any areas where um, you think that the line kind of messed up or that it didn't uh, read correctly. That way you have a very clean drawing. So the next step that we're going to do is we're going to start to hatch uh, materials onto our elevations. Now Rhino uh, provides for us um, kind of a free set of hatch patterns that we can use. So the way that we use them is we go to file, we go to properties, under annotation, um, if you go to document properties under annotation, you'll see a hatch option. So I already have all of these hatch options. Uh, Rhino generally gives you um, a few. And what you want to do is you want to import more. So let's go to our import. Let's go to the location where you downloaded that hatch pattern, which I have in this folder. Double click. And you see I have this hatch pattern that's the AutoCAD uh, a pattern file .pat. And you can find multiple hatch patterns through different websites uh, like Concrete, for example. And we'll type in open. So we'll select all of the instances that we want to import. So that's all of them. We type OK. And we click Yes to all. So then you would end up having a window that has all of these uh, different types of hatch patterns. So let's press OK. The next step that you want to do is you want to create a layer for hatch. Now I've already created a layer for hatch. Make sure you create one. And make sure that for the material color, uh, let's make it a little dark gray. Because we want this material to be slightly lighter um, than our main lines. So how we're going to hatch is um, we're going to select it. We're going to type in hatch. And we're going to select the region that we want to hatch. Now I recommend doing one uh, wall at a time. So let's say this is the first wall we want to hatch. Let's click it. Press enter. And you can see that a brick pattern came up. So this is a, already a brick pattern that I have uh, from your brick flooring. What I want is I'm going to assume that my building is uh, sided. Uh, it's cladded in wood. So we have wood siding. So let's go to this kind of wood siding pattern. And you can see that it's very dense. And we want to be kind of accurate with how we hatch as well. So what I'm going to do is let's say that our hatch, um, let's say that our siding is six inches. We have a six inch wood siding. So I'm going to draw a line that is six inches just so that I have a reference uh, for my hatch. So let's type hatch again. Let's select our curves, enter, select our uh, boundaries, press enter. And now I'm going to change the scale. So let's change the scale to one. You can see that it got larger, um, but it's still not it's still not six inches. So let's do 1.5. Okay, so uh, you know I'm recognizing that it is, yeah, it's six inches. So let's delete this. And now you can see that um, I have a hatch pattern that replicates a six inch wood siding. So let's do this again. Um, I actually have an opening right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in extend, and I'm going to close this opening. Otherwise, my hatch uh, will not fit in this boundary. So let's select this. Uh, we'll type in hatch. We'll select this region now. Enter. Okay. So now I have two different hatch patterns. Um, 
and of course when I do my line types maybe I have a lighter latch a lighter hatch and I have a darker hatch and then you can continue to hatch the rest of the elevations so let's hatch this and hatch that enter okay and then of course do the same uh, for this as well So yeah, Hatch uh, is a pretty effective tool. Um, you know, super quick, we were able to add kind of materials to our elevations. And you can imagine that if I'm printing this on white paper, um, it would look quite nice. And then of course, I would maybe make it like a, a lighter gray, just so that it reads, um, reads more nicely. Let's go back to application settings. So yeah, uh, the elevations are done. Um, I have the doors and everything as well. And then you can, of course, do this for concrete or you can do this for um, anything else. So now that we've done our hatch and we've done our elevations, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our site plan. So let's go back to our perspective view. Let's change our view, set view to perspective. And let's go back. And now what you'll realize is that our world axis is actually changed because we changed our view. So how we're gonna change that back to normal is we're gonna go to this pull down, we're gonna go to set C plane, and we're gonna choose it as the world top view. Just so that everything is aligned because when we start rendering or when we start to add shadows or project, um, it's gonna be affected by our world plane. So now that we've finished our elevations, the next thing that we're gonna jump into is our sections. So the first thing that we're gonna do is um, we already have our side model. So let's go ahead and select our side model. Uh, we'll copy and paste this over here. And if you look at our side model, um, it's where it's intersecting with the topography, there is no cut. You know, it's one entire topography. We want to split that surface. So let's take our house. We're going to do Control C, Control V. And we essentially want to create a mass that intersects with our topography. Now, the quick way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to type in extrude surface. I'm going to select the base of my house right here, and I'm going to in extrude it so that it intersects with the topography. And you can do this using a box command. You can do this uh, with extrude curve, however you wish to do so. But I pretty much have a mass. So now let's type in split. We're going to select the objects that we want to split. We want to split the topography. Let's select our cutting objects, which is this mass, enter. And now uh, we have this intersection where the topography and the house meet. So let's delete our mass. Let's delete our building as well. And now I'm going to take our house and I'm going to hide it. And you can see that wherever this topography is intersecting with the house, it pretty much split that surface. So let's delete this surface. And let's go ahead and split these uh, topography lines as well. So let's type in split. What objects do we want to split? We want to split these lines. And then the cutting object will be our topography. And now we have these. Um, split lines so now we deleted it so let's type show so our house is back so now we're going to start to use clipping plane to generate our floor plans um, if you type in clipping plane it'll tell us uh, what do we want to choose let's choose a vertical clipping plane for now and uh, that's our vertical clipping plane and what i want to do is i want to start to get our floor plans so how i'm going to do this is i'm going to actually turn this vertical clipping plane into a horizontal clipping plane. So you can see right here, it's essentially a horizontal clipping plane. Now, uh, one thing that I recommend is that since we're only doing floor plan, uh, I would actually go ahead and do this specifically to the uh, building that we have just so that our computer doesn't struggle because it might become a little bit slow. Let's go back over here. And I want my floor plan to be a section cut at four feet. So I'm gonna draw a line and I'm going to make this uh, four feet tall. So if I go right over here, I'm making this four feet. And in the next video, I'll start to jump into clipping plane and how we can generate our floor plans.